A topsy-turvy week in MLS, Columbus beats Chivas, Salt Lake thumps DC, and the real shocker, Shep, Toronto actually gets a win. Dramatic win for Toronto, but the LA Galaxy, what a joke. What a joke indeed. The league has been turned on its head next on Extra Time. Welcome to ET, everybody. I'm Greg Lawless, and with me, as always, Shep Messing, my cohort here in the ET studios. Today, we're trying to sort through the rubble of one of the wildest weekends we can remember. We'll look at the injury bug that is already affecting some teams. We'll also have the first installment of everyone's favorite quiz show, Stardom or Bencham. But Shep, first we head to Crew Stadium for the game of the week. Columbus defended their home turf this week and pulled out a 4-3 win against a very good Chivas USA side. The game had everything. Brilliant goals, two red cards, some shocking goalkeeping from Brad Guzan. This is early in the season, but it's a significant game. They defended their home turf, as you mentioned, and that's an important win for Columbus. It's a huge win for them. Columbus showed me something in this game in particular, which is they have a very solid attack. It all runs through Guillermo Barrosquiloto, who had a goal and two assists on the day. But everyone else on the team seems to be on his page now, which I find so impressive. Alejandro Moreno looked dangerous. He could score 10 goals this season. Robbie Rogers had two goals, and he made the pass that set up the PK for Columbus. Well, we talked about this Columbus team earlier in the year. They need Eddie Gavin and Robbie Rogers to play well. And you talk about Robbie Rogers, two good goals, but some horrific defending on those goals as well. That's true. The defense for Chivas really let them down. It, it was the guy out on the right side. The ball got through him twice and he missed the ball. And it didn't help that there was some poor goaltending behind them for Chivas. Guzan, usually so strong, really had a shocker on this night. Well, I'll tell you what, Greg, you know, we all rush to judgment and anoint the next great player. Brad Guzan is still a young player. Maybe his mind is on the move that didn't happen in Europe. Uh, two pretty bad goals that he allowed. And Will Hesmer at the other end, I mean, he's saved two PKs already in this season, but he's been erratic as well. And that's something that they need to figure out. You know, Guzan, obviously, such a great goalkeeper. And if he can continue to play well, they're going to be fine. But Hesmer has been inconsistent. And that's a problem for Columbus, who already have some troubles in the back in terms of figuring out how to stop teams. Probably the ugliest moment of the game came from Sasha Kleshton and his red card toward the end. It was a hip check on Baro Scalotto, which basically completed the Eric Canton uh, hat trick. A goal, an assist, and a red card. The goal was something incredible. The red card was something hideous. Greg, this is part of the growing process. Mm. This is really just a mental mistake. Where your team is, where you're at in the game, inexcusable. Hopefully he'll learn from it. They have a lot of work to do to find their groove out in Chivas, I think. It looked like they desperately missed a couple of players. The injured Ante Razov and Claudio Suarez in the back. Which brings us to the next topic of discussion on today's show, the injuries. Early in the MLS season, we've seen some major stars go down with significant injuries. Carlos Ruiz in L.A., Taylor Twelman, Steve Ralston, Ben Olsen in D.C., Juan Pablo on hell, Pablo Mastroeni. I mean, it reads like an MLS best 11. It's unbelievable. I mean, in the New England-Colorado game alone, you had Twelman, Chris Albright, Ralston out of the game, Mastroeni, Connor Casey, just in that game alone. The depth was an issue. They've adjusted well to their injury situation with guys like Adam Chrisman and Kenny Mansali picking up for Taylor Twelman. Amechi Igwe looked good in the back, but they were missing some players. Well, other guys stepped in. This guy Castro, I love because he could play wide to the left. He could play as an attacking midfielder. And Greg, I haven't seen anybody in Major League Soccer strike a corner kick and a set piece, including Beckham, as well as Castro. And he can do it with both feet, which is impressive as well. Now, Colorado has found some success on their bench as well with Mastroeni out. Nick LaBrocca has stepped in. He's been huge. He got the goal that beat New England. Alongside John DiRamondo, they've proved that they don't necessarily need Pablo Mastroeni in the lineup all the time. They've done well to slow the opposing team's attacks, allowing Christian Gomez really to run the offense. Well, Greg, they're looking pretty good, but there's one place I'm still not sure, and that's up front. They're playing with a lone striker in Cummings. He's a slashing player. Maybe they'll be better when kind of Casey gets back. He can hold the ball, hold up play, and allow his midfielders to join in the attack. Well, of the seven goals that they've scored, six of them have been scored by midfielders. Cummings has the one goal from a striker up top. Carlos Ruiz. I mean, wow. Could, could L.A. use him right now or what? Well, I, I think L.A. needs everything. Yeah, I, I don't well. want to, don't get me started about them on the defensive side of the ball, but Alan Gordon, very different player. They need a healthy Carlos Ruiz. 
Then you've got Landon running in and David Beckham serving balls up top. Well, another striker that's missing right now, Juan Pablo Angel from New York. He was out against Dallas, and New York put up a goose egg. Juan Pablo Angel is a great player, and I don't use the word great all the time. You could see the effect it had on young Josie Altador. Without Juan Pablo Angel in the game, Josie was lost, didn't know where to run, couldn't hunt down the ball, didn't look sharp. Angel takes defenders with him opens up space for Josie Altidore. Chef, let me ask you a question. All of these injuries early on in the season, why are they taking place? What's going on? Greg, it happens all over the world, but in Major League Soccer, I think it's exacerbated by lots of new players coming in. So my feeling, the early games in the year are a little bit like knock hockey, hard challenges, reckless challenges, and until these teams settle down, get a chemistry, develop a rhythm, I think that's the reason we have the rash of injuries. Well, it takes some time to get up to the speed of this league. Now, it's probably no coincidence that the last two remaining undefeated teams in the league, Chicago and Dallas, both relatively healthy. Well, there's one player when you talk about Chicago, he's got to remain healthy the entire year, and that's Blanco. The, the, I don't like him personally. I don't <laughs> like you know, his body language. I don't like his temperament, but he is a great player. He's the catalyst for everything good in Chicago. Well, I think you're crazy. I love him, but the question is, can he last a full season? Those 35-year-old legs are only getting older by the day. We're very excited to bring back an extra time favorite this week. Shep, get your coach's clipboard out because it's time for drum roll. Start him or bench him. Let's start with Toronto. The Reds are coming off a rare road win. Well, uh, actually a rare win of any kind. The game winning goal was scored by one time super sub, one time golden boot winner, Jeff Cunningham. Shep, are you starting Cunningham or are you benching him? This guy is trouble in the locker room, unhappy wherever he goes. He's got a world of physical talent, wants to be traded. I'm taking this guy, putting him on the bench, because I think if you put him in late in the game, that speed can get by defenders. Well, I'm actually going to go the other way. I would start him. I think that speed can be really terrific right from the start, especially with a guy like Amado Guevara in behind him to serve the ball over the top for him to run on to. Now we'll move to the East where right now Mauricio Castro has been some, somewhat of a revelation for the Revs. He can play out left, he can play in center, he can play out right, and out on the left, that's Kano Smith's natural position. So when Steve Ralston returns from an injury, are you starting or are you benching Kano Smith? I'm going to shock you, Greg. I wouldn't wait for Ralston to come back. I'd bench him right now, and if I, <laughs> even if I had to play with 10 guys. I mean, the guy does one great thing every game, but he makes 20 mistakes. I definitely would not have him in the starting lineup. Well, I disagree again. I would start Kano Smith, and here's why. That one thing that he does can win a game for you, and as the games get tighter, as the season goes on, that one thing is going to be very important, so I think you have to start him. Now, Jaime Moreno in D.C., you know, he's been coming off the bench a little bit more. I personally think that you have to bench him because he can't go full 90 anymore, but he is a devastating 20-minute late sub for United. I'm going to go the other way for the same reason, that he can't go 90 minutes, but I want Jaime Moreno in at the start of the game. If he could give me 60 minutes, 65, 70 minutes, he's got the maturity, he's got the skill on the ball, he can really make other players around him better. Well, it's certainly a luxury for D.C. to have all that striking talent. Now, another team with a glut at forward, Real Salt Lake. Robbie Finley came off the bench over the weekend to score for RSL in their dismantling of D.C. Would you start or bench Robbie Finley? I I'm starting Robbie Finley. I know they brought in the doctor from Scotland, Dr. Juker. He's a different style player than Finley, and there's something about the styles Jason Kreiss is thinking about. But for me, Finley is a young, good, exciting player. I've got him in the starting lineup. Really? Well, I'm going to bench him. I'd put him on the bench for the same reason as Jaime Moreno. I think he's a great late addition to a game. You inject the game with some speed. And because he's young, that's the thing. Get him more experience before you start to play him and look for 90. In the beginning, for that sort of craftiness, you have Martina Espindola to do all the work up there. You can also always bring in Yura Sissian for Real Salt Lake. Now, finally, we're going to end with Colorado. Jose Bursiaga Jr. Fernando Calavijo brought in Tim Ward and Bursiaga this offseason, letting Brandon Perdo go. Bursiaga, as we all know, has some ups and downs. He's already had them in 2008, you know, but for me... I think you have to start him. He brings too much going forward on the overlap on the left side. He hit the free kick for the game-winning goal against New England over the weekend. And, you know, if his teammates start to realize what those defensive liabilities are, they can figure out how to compensate, and then you get all the positives of him going forward. I'm going to start him. Greg, I'm going to agree with you, and, and you know how You're it is. It's, it's, you lose the ball 
everybody's got to defend. You win the ball, everybody has to get forward. So Bursiaga has the ability to get forward. He's got that wicked cultured left peg. He'll make a defensive mistake every game. But Colorado needs help going forward, so I start him as well. Now, Shep, something that I think has improved the show immensely is Shep's wow moment of the week. What have you got for us? Greg, the stage was set. Exciting to have soccer back in the Bay Area. A huge crowd. They're trying to tie the game, San Jose, and stop it's time. Wow. You've got to be kidding me. That's Shea Salinas. He's never going to forget that moment. He could have been a hero. Great ball into the box. Kamara with the header. And this one speaks for itself. Now, if you have any nominees for Shep's Wow Moment of the Week, you can email us at extratime at mlsnet.com or for any comments or questions that you might have. Well, Shea Salinas made it really hard for himself, but one guy who seems to be making it look easy on his return to MLS is Amado Guevara, and he's the subject of my final thought. The return of Amado Guevara to MLS has stirred some mixed emotions in me. He's exactly the kind of dynamic, creative playmaker this league needs. Unfortunately, he also has an ego that's about the size of Canada. Everywhere he's gone, he's burned bridges, and he's caused problems. Now, the jury's still out. Will Amado Guevara become a star again in this league? Or, at some point in July or August, will he turn around and bare his teeth at his own fans and his own team? Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for extra time this week. But, join us again next week. Shep will be here, and I'll be here, and we'll take it around.